Holy cow. This is sick. It is Candlemaker's Happy Hour Tuesday, depending on what part of the world you're in. We're going to have an awesome time today. We're going to talk about success, at least defining success when it comes to candle making. There's tons of motivational videos you could do, find out there about other parts of your life. But today we're going to focus on candles. That's what this channel is all about. Armitage Candle Company. My name is Kevin. This is the premier online resource for accelerating your candle making technique and business. And today we're going to break down the anatomy of a successful candle. Well, we can't jump into the definition of success without first defining the pillars that make up that success. What is success? Success, I believe strongly, is where your results meet your goals. The intersection of your results and your goals. And when it comes to candles, I believe there are two sides that make up that relationship, that intersection. So in order to define success with candle making, we have to know what goals we have to set to be able to define and support that definition of success. So I'm going to go into what I believe that is. I'm going to talk about ways we can gauge that, metrics we can use. Um, so before we dive in, though, this will be, though, I'll have a Q&A at the very end. Feel free to post up your questions. I won't ignore you, but I may wait until the end to get to it. If you're watching in the future, feel free to leave a comment and I will get to that as well. So let's dive in. So like I said, I believe there are two pillars to support candle making. Two things, two ideas that we can use to define and put boundaries on what we think success is when it comes to candles. And the first is what I call, and I say it all the time, performance. Performance. How does the candle actually perform? How does it look? How does it smell? Does it throw strong? Does it burn for a long time? Does it have the proper amount of lumens if you're into making candles for light? Which I don't think many of us are, but maybe that's up to you. Maybe that's important to you. So performance, kind of the mostly subjective side of candles. The second side, which I believe is a lot more scientific, a lot more concrete, something we can really get our arms wrapped around is safety. Is it is the heat under control? Is the container smoking? Is the container cracking? Is do you have other standards that you care about that for safety that are being met? You know, is the flame dancing? Is that something you don't want? Or maybe you don't like mushrooming because you're anti-mushroom, whatever it is. If you're one of those fungal people, shout out to the mushrooms. But safety, setting those, this is the concrete, as I burn it, it shouldn't violate these boundaries, is the other side. So performance and safety. So I believe that success with candle making can be summarized thusly, thusly. Yeah, use that one this week. Achieving trustworthy safety with optimal performance trustworthy safety with optimal performance so this is really blending the science and science and art is what success is here science and art science being the safety things we can easily measure art being the performance I mean, some of those are easy to measure like burn time how long it can burn for how many hours how many lumens you could measure that but you can't really measure how does it how does it smell good? Is this something other people like? Is the scent strong? Because you and I know that what I believe might be strong and what you believe might be strong might be completely different. We might be completely misaligned. And if you've been in the game long enough, you know that you're potentially nose blind. You might not really understand or be able to tell the same way you would have a year ago, two years ago. So some of those things evolve. So science and art, that's the blend. So three tips, I'll give you three tips. Three tips for testing performance and three tips for testing safety. Things that useful, hopefully valuable information that you can take with you, a little inspiration for you along the way. So I'll start with performance. Three ways, three things to keep in mind when you're testing performance. One, 
test only only burn one candle at a time. Why? Because when you burn multiple candles, you might not be able to tell where the scent is coming from. One of the biggest things we test for is the scent throw. And we don't have good ways to measure that. You can use gas olfactometry or whatever that you can buy like a $300 specto tool. I don't even know what it's called. But you can buy that. You can measure literally the amount of aromatic molecules in the air. But that still doesn't tell you if it smells good. But burning one candle at a time helps you lock in on that one candle. Is that one candle the one that's doing well? Like, for instance, let's say you're going through, you're building a new candle, and you have a bunch of different wicks, and you're trying that out. And you burn them all at the same time, and you get a good aroma. It's hard to tell if that's coming from the fact that there's four candles burning at once or only one. So performance testing, I say only burn one candle at a time. Unless you're not unless you're not looking into scent throw, un- unless you're only looking at maybe burn time, then that'd be okay. The second tip is move the candle in between rooms between each burn. So you burn it for a session in one room. I say move it to another room for the next session. Move it to another room after that. Try to get a small room, a medium room, and a large room throughout your test. Reason being, maybe obvious, maybe not, but depending on the ambient conditions of that room, you may get a stronger throw. Smaller rooms like bathrooms tend to be pretty good. The airflow is actually pretty good in a bathroom, and so you might get well good circulation. Almost any candle is going to throw well in a bathroom. Move that to a kitchen, move that to a living room, or if you're super confident, move it to a freaking garage and see how that goes, right? You'll get a good, you know, subjective look at how strong that candle is depending on the room it's in. Because you might have a, a winner, but if you're in a room that is stagnant and stale, you may not get the throw that's like an honest look at that candle. So it helps also give a more uh, complete look at how that candle performs under certain conditions. Okay, third tip for testing performance is gather other people's opinions too. Now, this has a lot of benefits because it means that you are giving some candles away, which people love free stuff, giving candles away. You are uh, also removing yourself from the equation a little bit. Keep one for yourself probably. You should test. You're the candle maker, but other people can tell you, hey, I love that, or you might know generally what they like, and they can tell you if it was good or bad. And I find that the aggregate opinion of multiple people from different areas, burning in their homes, in their conditions, with their style, gives you a more uh, honest look at how that candle is doing too. Because here's the other thing. If you're selling candles, you don't know how your customers are going to buy it. If you're giving them away to coworkers and friends, you don't know what they're, maybe, maybe this is you giving it away to coworkers and friends, but you don't know what the conditions are going to be like for them. So Tip number three is gather other people's opinions too, because generally the group consensus will help you understand if you've got a great one or not. I recently made a candle and shipped it off to one of my buddies and he burned it and where, where I could smell it pretty strongly, he said, I can't even tell it. Does, is it vanilla? It had no vanilla in it. <laughs> no vanilla. So I, I think he was trying to just make me feel better, but the candle just, he wasn't getting any throw where I was. And it could be the room. It could be so many things. But it's also in the hands of other people who are also going to burn it. And when I collect all that data, helps give me some feedback on what I can do. Maybe I need to improve the candle a little bit. Different wick, different fragrance, whatever it is. So three tips for performance, three tips for safety. First tip, identify the criteria, the concrete criteria that are important to you. For a lot of us, No matter what's important to you, there's going to be a little section called the industry standard. This is, in the U.S. at least, this should be important to you. Because if you're distributing or selling them, it's important that you meet this. It's not the law. You don't have to do it. But the industry standards for testing, for saying that this candle is safe, indicate to the world that, hey, I did my my duty, my responsibility. I said that this candle passes these important criteria. And if you don't do that, the risk, besides potentially having a very unsafe candle, the risk is that 
you could lose it all. Someone could come after you if you if you have even if you have insurance, it could be a hefty claim because you weren't following. They'll say the courts will say, "Hey, did you do what you're supposed to do?" Like, no, it's not the law. But when we check into whether or not you were good, like did the sticker thing, you know, did it pass the safety test? They'll look at a lot of things and they want to make sure you pass what we kind of accepted as an industry as the standard. So that should be important to you. But the other criteria, anything else beyond that, there's a lot of other things to check for. Identify those things too when you're when you're safety testing. Build that list and and hold yourself to it. Things like the dancing flame or mushrooming, you know, those things aren't covered by the industry standard, but you may hate that. You may not want that in your candle, so you get rid of that. And Jar temperature, that's another thing. It's technically not in the industry standard. What is in the industry standard? Flame height, for container candles at least, the flame height is to be less than three inches. You can't damage the surface that it's burning on. You can't have secondary ignition, meaning a different part of the candle lit up in flames. You don't want the candle to tip on its own and the candle can't, the container can't crack or break. So that, those are the, the criteria covered by ASTM 2417 is what it is. So that's, that's why I say for safety testing. Before you safety test, identify those items, things that have to be true for you to say this is a safe candle. The second is always burn an extended period of time, minimum, I'd say three to four hours. Why? Well, the unsafe part of the candle is the fire, the heat. <laughs> the potential injury or hazard that can be caused by the heat. Well, the candle melts and gains more heat over time. So if you're only ever testing for two hours, you're not gonna get, potentially you're not gonna see that candle at its fullest, which would be fine if you're the only one ever burning it. But if you give it to other people or they buy it or whatever else it is, they're likely gonna burn it for longer than two hours or they might, you know, it's, it's not really much of a gamble. It's almost a guarantee. Most people will burn a candle for much longer than our suggested four hour max that we put on our stickers. It's just the reality of things. So when you safety test, check it for three hours, three to four hours a minimum. That's my suggestion. Now, if you're testing to the industry standard, that's a four hour test for container candles. I think it's till end of life for tea lights. Of course, tea lights generally are a lot easier to deal with, but so always test for an extended period of time. And the last one, which comes with a story, is don't compromise your safety, the safety of your candle, because you're impatient. Don't compromise the safety of the candle because you're impatient. I get super impatient. And it's not just the cure time. Yes, cure times can, can take a while and they can really test you. <laughs> is this for me? Because I can't stand waiting two weeks or one week, or maybe you don't wait, maybe you're a one day here, that's fine. But proper safety testing means burning that candle from the top to the bottom, top to the bottom, right? Candles change over time, over the period of their life, those near the top, that heat escapes generally to the atmosphere, somewhat harmless. As, as the wax level goes down, more of that heat will go into the walls of the container and creates a warmer atmosphere, it gets hotter. Near the bottom, there's potentially other issues. Not only all that heat trapped in the walls, but you've got maybe more melted wax. And maybe that wick no longer has the stability it had near the top with all that solid wax holding it and is floating towards one side or another. How many pictures have we seen on Facebook of those candles that cracked or shattered or exploded because the wick had tipped or was off center and that heat was unevenly distributed right into the wall of that candle and it just shattered a horrible thing. That's why it's important to go top to bottom. You want to see the whole candle in its entire life period. So, and that takes time, right? So that takes patience, which it's a little easier to deal with if you constantly have a bunch of candles going at once or, or processes in, in flight. That helps. But don't compromise your safety because you're impatient or because you have a deadline. I guess I would still be impatient. So let's talk about Ford. 
you know, Ford, the candle company, no, Ford, the automobile company. In 1968, Ford was getting worried about these small cars coming from overseas. You may have heard of the Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> that was getting big, getting really popular. And there were some other subcompact cars in flight. They were coming from overseas. Ford was worried. They're like, we got to compete. And so they said, we're going to make a new car. But they said, we really need to get it out the door. So they cut their production, testing, all of that time down by 40%. And in 25 months, they released the Ford Pinto. Some of you may be smiling. Some of you maybe have never heard this. The ones who know, you know what's coming. Well, the Ford Pinto was found out that if it got rear-ended, the way it was designed, a rear end caused the fuel tank to rupture, which sometimes meant it would ignite into flames. The fuel tank literally igniting into flames. And it was really tragic, but 27 people died directly from this oversight or defect if you're Ford at the time. 27 people died. And that was 1970, September it was released. Well, in 78, the world finally caught up. People were saying, hey, this is a problem. They're identifying this as like, clearly there's an issue here. And the investigation eventually led to Ford recalling 1.5 million Ford Pintos from the market. 1.5 million Ford Pintos. Can you imagine that? Holy cow. Well, that investigation then revealed some other somewhat frightening facts about what went down here. Well, first, they did crash. They secretly crash tested this Ford Pinto 40 times. Safety tested, you could call it. And it ruptured every single time the test was over 25 miles per hour. 25 miles per hour would cause a rupture. They knew this. They knew this. They were aware of this. And the engineers were, or they looked into the engineers, they looked at internal documents. They found that several things were proposed to deal with this known issue before the release. Several things were pr proposed, including a $1 plastic part that could have protected against the issue. One dollar piece of plastic weighed one pound. However, the president at the time said, safety doesn't sell. And everybody was too nervous to approach him because they knew, they knew how he was about this. Safety doesn't sell. Oh, really? Well, they sold, they did fine. But then eight years later, one and a half million were recalled. That's not much of a sale, if you ask me. But they knew about the problem and they decided. They actually did a financial analysis. They put a price on a human life and they said, you know what? It's worth it. It's worth the risk of lawsuits that we can pay. It'll be less expensive than whatever they believed it would cost them to implement this change and do this. They were huge on saying this needs to be less than 2,000 pounds and it has to cost less than $2,000. Well, it's hard for me to believe that a $1 piece of plastic would put them over the 2,000 pound, $2,000 limit. But that's history, that's history. So I hope the lessons here are clear, let's, let's review. First, they rushed into production, they rushed to get the sale without properly safety testing or at least properly responding to their safety tests. They cut their production time by 40%. Yeah, they got to market right when they wanted to. They got to market, but the product they were putting out had some known issues. The second lesson is they knew what they could do, but they willingly did not make that change. Now, building a safe car is a little more complicated than building a candle, but the changes we have to make are well known and easy to implement. I'll say simple to implement, sometimes not easy. Sometimes it's hard to figure out what you have to do or what size wick you have to choose, honestly. And the, but then the worst part is that people died because they didn't make this small change in their power, in their power. Does a human life have a price? Ford put a number on it. I'm sure insurance companies have a number for it, but we don't. As candle makers, I think this is a great lesson. It tells us that successful candles, the anatomy of a successful candle, is kind of like cars. You want a safe car, you built right, with the dollar piece of plastic if you need it. Uh, so it, structurally it works, everything interacts the way it should, the combustion is present, and a kind of 
melding my two analogies here. But you also, the performance needs to be there. The Ford Pinto, I'm sure it was performing well. And that's what got, that was their criteria to get to market is good performance. Well, it costs them in the end because they sacrifice safety in favor of performance. And now with candles, that, that's kind of enough about Ford Pinto candles company, whatever that is. But with candles, it's kind of the same thing. It, you need performance. Yes. What good is a candle you can't smell? But you shouldn't sacrifice safety in favor of performance. But on the other hand, you don't want a candle that's perfectly safe, but doesn't perform at all. So getting to that measure, those are the goals we need to set. It performs well and it is safe. And when we set those goals and we realize them and they intersect, that is what I believe is a successful candle. Cool. Well, that's all. Quick plug. If safety is something that you are know you need, but you don't have a good idea what to do, we've got you covered. I put together something, uh, a template really. It's got all the industry standards and it's got some other criteria you might care about. And it's yours for free. Uh, links are in the description. Maybe not now, but in the replay they will be. It's a burn test template and you can get the PDF and you can take it and you can print it off for every candle. You can test well. It's got everything. It's got all the markers. You just kind of follow through, fill in the blanks. But if, even if you don't want that, even if you don't like it, or you look at it and you're like, oh, that, you kind of oversold that. <laughs> it sucks. You can just take it, copy paste what you like out of it into your own. Like for me, I get all, I, I often take free stuff and make it better for me. Everybody's got their own process. And so there's no branding on it, none of that, but you can take it, copy it, paste it if that's what you like. You can get that by going to armitagecandlecompany.com slash burn test, burn hyphen test, burn dash test, however you want to interpret that. And it's yours. So that's my plug for safety. Um, I don't see any questions. Instagram, I can't see what's going on there, but that's all I have today. I hope you make beautiful candles. I hope you have a great week. I hope you didn't get scared. I hope you actually said, you know what? I'm doing it all right. I'm doing good. Or maybe the little self-realization that, hey, I I should think about changing a few things up. Maybe get myself, take, take a step back. You know, Christmas is coming. Goose is getting fat. And we have a lot of candles to put out. So I would say just be successful. <laughs> Anyways, take care. Have a great week. Bye.